and Gibbons, then it cannot exclude humans. There is no zoological category, no taxonomic category, which includes chimpanzees, bonobos, gorillas, and orangutans, and gibbons, um, and excludes hu humans. So um, we are apes, we are African apes. Since we're closer to chimpanzees and bonobos than either of them is to gorillas, we are a particular subset of African apes united with chimpanzees and bonobos, but excluding gorillas. So we are undoubtedly um, African apes by any standard at all. Uh, yes. D tell me when I got to stop. Who's, who's chairing this? Richard, I'm, uh, I've been looking, while you've been talking, I've been looking at the picture up on the screen. And um, clearly that's ridiculous, but I can, I can see a lot of non-technical, non-scientific people who don't really understand evolution for whom that might be seductive. Um, what I'd like to see is um, a book, you could call it Evolution for Dummies if you like, but a book that would, it, with lots of pictures in a Dorling Kindersley fashion, explain it properly to people who perhaps would never pick up one of your, your usual tomes. Is there a book like that you can recommend or is that something you might take on as another project? Well, I get the feeling there are Dorling Kindersley type books uh, around. Um, I can't actually think of any names at the moment. I'm surprised you think anybody would be persuaded by that, although apparently they are, um, unless they were indoctrinated as children, which I suspect is the real problem that underlies really everything we've been talking about t today. Um, you asked whether I would undertake such a book. I am planning a children's book. Uh, probably, I wasn't actually thinking of a picture book like that, but perhaps you're right. Perhaps that would be the right way to do it. But I, that's the book I hope to write next year. Two more questions, perhaps? Uh, yes, there. The, the question is about uh, uh, the Reverend Professor Michael Rice, um, who was employed by the Royal Society as their education spokesman and who um, was somewhat pilloried for uh, saying uh, in a speech at the British Association and in a, an accompanying article uh, that the right way to handle creationism in schools is to um, treat the question uh, sympathetically, to show respect for the um, for the uh, religious beliefs of, that the children have been indoctrinated in. He didn't say he didn't put it like that. Um, and um, rather than... Uh, um, and it, it, this, this was, I, I think, to be fair, I think this was misinterpreted by some newspapers as uh, saying that he was advocating the teaching of creationism. Um, there was an almighty furore at the Royal Society um, and... Uh, under, the, under pressure of numerous letters from eminent scientists, including, I think, at least three Nobel Prize winners, um, Michael Rice resigned. Um, I, I, I think that, it, that there was an element of unfairness in that, in that he, he, what he actually said was probably not too objectionable. Uh, the problem really... I suspect, to be honest, was that, 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 he, that he's a reverend. And therefore, in a way, he was the very last person who, from a purely political point of view, should have been saying that because he was unfortunately vulnerable to the, well, he would say that, wouldn't he, accusation. If somebody like me had said it, uh, I'd probably have got away with it fine. Um, but uh, I think it brought out... The, the somewhat anomalous position, well, more than somewhat, that the Royal Society had employed a clergyman as their uh, education spokesman in the first place. And I think that was really the, the source of that um, rather unfortunate episode. Yes, one more. Okay, um, I think that gentleman there. Thank you. Um, I think the underlying theme of your talk is that uh, science today is uh, being challenged 
uh, rationality is being challenged by a religion, by superstition, by misguided dogmatism. And also in these days of dwindling funds and dwindling student numbers in engineering and science, uh, we're also seeing that things like this are being uh, funded in uh, oil barrel loads of money. What's the answer? How do we uh, turn this back? I wish that the answer was as simple as just simply lay out the facts and show people how obvious they are and how easy to understand they are. Um, that's the policy that I have adopted throughout my entire career, uh, through, through nine, ten books. Um, it works for some people, but I'm afraid it's becoming increasingly clear that it does not work for people whose childhood indoctrination, imprinting one might almost call it, is sufficiently strong. Um, the most dramatic illustration of this I know is a man called Kurt Wise, who's an American geologist who uh, did, um, he did a degree at the University of Chicago. He then did a doctorate at Harvard in geology under Steve Gould, no less. And uh, he then became uh, um, aware that the geology he was learning was, um, he became increasingly aware that it was incompatible with the religion of his childhood, which was fundamentalist Christianity. And he dramatically describes how he got a pair of scissors and a Bible. And he went right through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, cutting out every verse that would have to go if he took science seriously. And it says at the end that having gone through this exercise, there was so little left of scripture that it just fell apart. There was nothing left. And he said, that night, in great sorrow, I tossed into the flames, and you hope he's going to toss the Bible into the flames, but no, I tossed into the flames all my hopes and aspirations to be a scientist and a science teacher. He gave up science. Uh, and then he goes on to a sort of final peroration where he says in this article, if all the evidence in the universe uh, demonstrated a young, sorry, an old earth, if all the evidence in the universe showed, showed that the earth is old, I would still be a young earth creationist because that is what Holy Scripture tells me. Now, I f find myself powerless against that. I find myself despairing against somebody who can actually, after a Chicago Harvard education in science, of the best possible kind in the world, can stand up and say, if all the evidence goes one way and Scripture goes the other, I'm going to go with scripture. What chance have we got when the indoctrination, the imprinting of childhood leaves a mind so wrecked as that? Richard, that was absolutely wonderful. But as the incoming chair, Keith Fortress Wood, I don't think I can let it last just to leave at that very last moment. I'm going to ask you to say something positive about what the people in this room and what a magnificent group of people dedicated to science are here. Can we ask them to do something politically? We can see they can't do it through persuading people, but is there something we can persuade them to do politically and, and through the media and that kind of thing to, to actually start pushing the boundaries back towards rationality. I hate ever to quote Tony Blair, <laughs> but uh, I suppose the, 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 the beginning of an answer has to be education, education, education. And I don't know quite how one seizes the, the reins of education, but it it does seem to me that if, if any people know in their local communities that there are schools where children are being indoctrinated with, with, um, with false nonsense, palpable nonsense, I don't mean genuine controversy where one's taking sides. I'm talking about obvious palpable nonsense such as young earth creationism uh, or even old earth creationism of the Haran Yahya kind. Um, if you know of that and you have any influence in your com communities over what is being taught, that would be uh, one, one place to go. I, d I don't know how one gets influence over education, but I think that's the, that's the point of leverage. Wonderful. Thank you very much indeed.